Today we're going to be interviewing the Thrift Jesus. How are you doing? Good, nice how are you to doing? see you. Thank I'm you. I'm glad we finally get to work together. And me too. Yes. I'm very excited to have Long you Long overdue. Here. Yeah. But definitely, you know. Of course, so tell, right us, on time. tell yes. us about yourself. Okay, so my name is Alexandria Grimes. I am from Gary, Indiana. A lot of Gary, people Indiana. know that. Yes, they think that I am from Atlanta because I've been here. This is like my second home. Oh, okay. So I have been here a while, um, but I feel like my style, my fashion sense kind of mocks more of the Midwest vibe. Yeah, you have some very interesting style. Thank you, yes. I try to have fun with my style. Of course. I just feel like you don't need to be boxed in or overthink when it comes to fashion. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this so outfit you have on. This is more of a mood. This is like, I've seen all the, the greats with the moo on when the they moo. have interviews. Oh, okay. And they sit like this and they talk like this. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I feel like I just wanted to join that energy. So, this is my moo moo of choice. Um, it's actually a vintage 70s piece. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's, my, that's my favorite era. So. Vintage 70s. Vintage 70s. So, what were some key figures that helped you draw that? Um, some of my favorites, Diana Ross. Diana Ross? I love, love her. Ross. Yes, she's amazing. Um, her daughter as well. Yeah. Tracy is beautiful. So, they're definitely some of my inspirations. Um, I just, any of like the ladies of the past who we have, um, I can never think of names, I should have wrote them down. I know names. <laughs> I should have wrote them down. It's, it's all good. Right. Well, y'all know who they are. <laughs> Felicia Rashad and that whole group. Uh, Ruby D, all of those ladies. So, um, elegance, class, sensuality, sexy without doing too much, you know, still having that mystery. That is my inspiration. It's wow. Like my personal style. Uh, I, um, she unfortunately she just passed and did. My condolences. Thank you. Yeah, she just passed, but she was always. Every time she went out, she she never failed to just amaze people with her style. Like she, she was the matching queen, and you know it's not easy to match certain colors, orange and blues and greens. But she would make right. sure everything was on point. So shout out to Auntie K. Living here in Atlanta, Georgia, and due to COVID nineteen. What were some of the trials and tribulations that your brand faced? Um, even before COVID, I feel like anybody who, single parent, who are who's building something uh, or creating something, a lane of their own. You said single parent, right? Yes, single parent, <laughs> entrepreneur, female, and black. You know, I have everything that people would expect to be against me. A lot of odds. A lot of odds to, to try to just get over it. And I feel like COVID or no COVID, it's always going to be that way. You're always going to have to face something, some type of challenge and try to get to the next step. But wow. for me, I feel like COVID, if anything, it honestly brought out the hustle in everybody. Right, I agree. I feel like people, I've, I've met people recently who have businesses that I thought were 10, 20 years old. And they're like, oh, I started during COVID. Wow. Because it pushed people into a position where they had to really dig deep and dive into themselves and realize that we can't rely on anybody else to get us where we want to be in life. Gotcha. So we had to use our creativity and the gifts and talents God gave us to really go to the next level. So I feel like that's what COVID did for me. It wasn't so much that it was such a challenge. It was more so it just pushed me to go even harder. Wow. So where do you plan to go after the pandemic? Um, right now I'm looking into traveling. Okay. Um, I do a lot of thrifting in the city and I really want to thrift all over the country and all over the world. That would be really cool. Uh, yeah, so I really want to do a thrifting tour where I go from country to country or city to city and I um, have thrift hauls and then of course with you guys I'll be sharing my favorite pieces that I can let. Please do. Yes, Please so. do. So I remember backstage before the cameras had got the rolling, you said that you are a published stylist. Yes. Can you shed a little light about some of the projects that you did before? Yeah, definitely. Um, so this year particularly was such a blessing because I ended up, some of the stuff I manifested ended up happening. I actually always thought it made sense for the thrift Jesus to work with God is dope. I was just like, that's God is Jesus. Why are we not doing this? So this year it happened. I actually styled for uh, Goddess Joe. Cool. So, um, some of the work I did for them is on their page, and it, you know they accumulate a lot of views and stuff over the time. So that was amazing. I got published twice in High Care magazine. Really? Yes. So that was awesome, and it was just a blessing because the first time I got published. 
with them, I was actually the model. Oh. Yeah, so I have a pocket okay, where okay. I'm in there. You know, you gotta go show it to your son. Like, flip through there, you know, to see what you see. And then you're like, oh, is that mommy? Yes. So that was amazing. And then the second time I got published by them, I had an amazing team and we just all showed out. Everybody did their part. And that's why I love working with a team because I feel like when everybody really rises to the occasion, right. so much can happen and you're not stressed because you're trying to do too much. You get to stay in your lane and what you specialize in and everybody gets to execute. You know what I'm saying? So That was well spoken. Man. Yeah, so that's why I love teamwork and I feel like that's what led me to be able to get those publications. Okay, okay. Yeah. So as a stylist with Black Lives Matter and the support that we see from corporations now, as somebody that designs your own clothes, what is your perception on corporations that support black-owned businesses? Do you believe that this is something that can open doors, that seeing more black um, clothing wear on storefronts and in store windows? Or would you see that this could also be a perception as a backdrop and a lucrative scheme? Um, I support allies, but I feel like personally we don't need them. Okay. I feel like if we have our own backs and we, instead of keep on investing into companies that in the first place treat us wrong or come at us sideways, then we won't have to feel like we need that validation. Because I feel like if we really support our own, if we line up for our friends' candles the way we line up for the sale when they have them at Bath and Body Works, right. we would be fine. We, we would need that extra... You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I said, that validation or to feel like it matters what someone else thinks or feels. Because a lot of it is fake love to me. I feel like some of it, it came across as very cheesy because it wasn't until shit hit the fan is when they start showing up and showing up. It's kind of like how when Rihanna, she dropped Fenty right. and she had all those shades yeah, of makeup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now all these okay. companies coming out the blue like, we hey. got black too. <laughs> And it's like, where was where was that promotion to begin with? It shouldn't take one of our own to come forward and do it for us. Then they all piggyback off of that. If it was genuine, I just feel like it would have been promoted. It would have been out there to begin with. So for me, I'm not opposed to people who want to say, you know, I'm with the cause. I'm all for it. But at the same time, if we're not with the cause ourselves and we have our own backs, then it doesn't matter who's down with us at all. Hmm, very interesting. Thank you for that perception. So we're getting ready to close it out with a couple more questions. Before we do, please tell us about, um, is it okay if we get to know a little bit more of you as a mom? Like, Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm always talking in interviews and I kind of always sound robotic kind of because it, it always goes around those same topics and those same questions. So I, I, re I respect and appreciate, you know, being able to go kind of deeper into my life because people might think it's easy or it's impossible what right. I did. And it's not. It's no. more than anything, what I did was just, I had that motivation because I had no choice. I've been in positions where I've been homeless. I've been in positions I've slept in my car before. Wow. I've been in positions where I've slept couch to couch. I've had friends I've had to sleep on their couch. And I always kind of felt like it was too soon to give that story because I was like, I haven't made it yet. Nobody's gonna care until you make it. But I feel like I am making it. I feel like I am in a position now where I can speak on those things because I'm no longer in that situation. I feel like as long as you can say, okay, this happened and this is where I'm at, mm -hmm. and there's progress in a process that you can share, it's never too early to tell your story. And some people wait and they're like, oh, I gotta wait till I'm 40, I'm 50, and all that. And it's like, no, you don't. You can literally tell your story as it's happening as long as you're showing and sharing that there's progress. And so that's one thing with my son. He's 11 now, so he's in that stage. He feel like he don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm good as long as I got manga and I got my food, I'm happy. But yeah, I think subconsciously it's funny because, you know, he's never talked about getting a job. He only wow. has always talked about owning the company before. That's really cool. And so that's what makes me know what I'm doing. It affects him and he's, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. sees it because he's not thinking that direction. He's thinking in a, in a 
direction where he's like, okay, I want ownership. Very plentiful mindset. He wants ownership and he wants abundance. And I respect that. And I, I show him the finer things myself because when I was younger, I didn't see a lot except poverty. I saw a lot of poverty. I saw a lot of stress. I saw a lot of things like that. So I had, growing up, I had that mindset. I had a poverty mindset. What was the young thrift so, Jesus like growing up? Young thrift Jesus was all over the place. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Thrifting and styling found me. I didn't, how, I didn't ever so? plan to like, be a stylist okay. ever. Like, it's funny because I didn't even know that was a real job. I didn't know people could get paid to make people look good. I just <laughs> didn't know. Like, I had no clue. Nobody told me. So when I found out about wardrobe styling, I don't know. I think I was probably late high school okay. and I was like wow I can really get paid for making people look amazing and have fun my whole life and just walk around looking great and doing me and that is what I always wanted I wanted that freedom and I feel like people worry about the money side so much it's not about having the money it's about the financial freedom because you get that time you get that energy instead of stressing from bill to bill you're like yo I can put this time for it my self-care days and this and that and, and you get to make your own schedule okay. so I feel like that's what really motivated me to, to stick to it because I haven't worked for anybody in about a year well congratulations thank you so I've been working for myself for a year now and a lot of the people don't understand like the process of getting there like I said poverty mindset you have to get out of the mindset that you need someone else or something else outside of yourself once you start seeing that it's just you and you can do this with your own gifts, it is, it is, it's like a switch that click in your head. And then also, don't use a job as like a crutch. Don't say, oh well, you know, I would. Act like, it's, act like that's your last resort. Treat it like the last resort. Because I promise, if you treat a job like, like you don't have that option, mm -hmm. then you'll go hard for yourself and you'll show up and show out for your own brand. Because the, the, the time and energy you put into these jobs, mm -hmm. that can be towards your own thing. And so I just feel like, you know, for me as a mom, seeing my son be able to recognize that and want his own, that's, that alone is a blessing, you know, because that's what I really want. And nobody taught me that growing up. Very insightful. Yeah, so that was a big part of it. And then um, what was the other thing you said? Um, I believe you covered that. So before we get ready to close it out, um, can you please tell us like where can we find you and your work at, and what was your first show like? You know, and what were some of the um, lessons that you learned? Um, you saw my first show. Mm -hmm. Fashion show. I'm trying to think back. I had a fashion show before the one I had this year, and it was a lot of trial and error. Okay. Of course, you only learn by having mistakes. I really believe. If I didn't have a lot of the ugly things I went through, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. It wouldn't have led me to all the beautiful things I'm in now. Very so, interesting. So I needed that ugly to get to this place. Mm -hmm. And I, I, one of my favorite quotes is, "Trust your struggle." Okay. Because for me, it was never an idea or a question of if I would be great. I just didn't know what I would do to get to greatness. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the path of the journey that I was gonna take to get here because I started as a singer. I used to draw, I did paintings, I did art. And it's not to say those things don't matter or that I can't do them anymore, mm -hmm. but this was the one thing that consistently worked for me. Okay, so good. Yes, that I knew I could grow from and, and get more wisdom and, you know, and it's timeless. I, I've seen word of stylists who are 70 and 80 years old and they're still right. out here. still out here. Exactly. Right. So. <laughs> That alone made me just motivated to really stick to it because I was like, this is something I can do for my entire life and I won't regret it. I'll have a beautiful life. I'll be able to meet so many amazing people, which I have, like yourself. <laughs> and <laughs> so that's why I just feel like for me, it's been a blessing. And even though it has been hard, it's been worth it. That is very beautiful and touching. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is almost about our time. Oh yeah, so where to find me? Um, I am Instagram queen. I love Instagram. If you want to meet me on there, you'll see my, my page, my work. You'll see my events that I have. I have pop-ups all over Atlanta that you definitely need to come to if you're here. 
Um, if you are not in Georgia and you want to be a part of what I got going on, um, my website is thethriftjesus.com. You are more than welcome to go there. You can shop on there. You can book me on there as well. And um, one thing that I do want to say before we leave, I have a brand next year coming out. It's called Water to Wine. I have items like this coming out and it's all top quality, beautiful stuff. I take a lot of time to really invest into making sure everything is organic and as comfortable but as fashionable as possible. Uh, quality is my best friend. I, just, I do not play about quality. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to sell you guys just anything. So, if you guys definitely um, love the message of what I got going on, please support um, and definitely just keep up with me. And I do not buy it, so... <laughs> uh, if you see me in the street, say hello. So yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the thrift cheese.